Instagram. Good morning, Facebook. A couple seconds behind there. Happy Tuesday morning. It is October 18th. I have 6.13 a.m. It's a chilly morning. I'm excited about the fall. Yesterday was so gorgeous and so nice outside. It was actually hot inside instead of outside yesterday. That time of the year. So, <sighs> a breath of fresh air from the Lord. So, today we're in Ephesians 2 and we're talking about incomparable riches. Incomparable riches. I have them and I hope you do too. <sighs> so, Ephesians 2, 6, and 7 says, God raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. It's all done in Christ Jesus. Um, all the good, all the good, all good and perfect gifts are from him. God tells us to store up the right kind of riches in our lives. We often think of riches in a materialistic way, but God speaks of riches that don't fade away. When we live obediently for him, he will deposit his riches in our hearts, creating an inward righteousness that produces the marks of a true believer in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6 through 8 is the reference for that. So we'll see what 8 says in a minute. <clears throat> there goes Lenny's alarm. I wonder how long it'll take him this morning. I'm going to leave him alone until I get done. Okay, so Mark's a true believer in Christ. When we possess the richness of salvation, our storehouse here will be full to overflowing with the fruit of the Spirit. Unspeakable joy, peace that passes all understanding, wisdom, strength, and the love of Christ. In heaven, there will be many believers who never received any acknowledgement while on earth, yet they faithfully prayed and humbly served Christ. I believe their crowns may sparkle with more jewels than the ph philanthropist who endowed the church and whose name is engraved on the plaque in the narthex. Maybe so, because I think a lot of times there's a lot more motivation for the philanthropist, right? Like, <laughs> choking on that word. Um, because there's accolades and there's, uh, you know, um, all this appreciation, all this applause and, um, encouragement and stuff from fellow man, uh, fellow Christian anyway, but, um, you know, it's a little bit harder when it's, when it's in the quiet, when it's, it's just you and God, um, in that respect, not in the respect of the strength of Christ, that's where the true love and wisdom and strength and all the things he was talking about come into play. But also, is that philanthropist doing it for the right reasons? So will you have a crown in heaven? Will you have a crown in heaven? I wish that's what the scripture was about, Billy, since that's what I know. There are crowns in heaven, and you know what? We're not getting them to wear them we're getting them to cast them at jesus feet because without him there are none um and no ability for any that is where our worth is where it is found and maybe that is in this chapter but it's not in the verses he mentions so we'll get into the chapter and we'll see in ephesians 2 if not may well i don't know i can take a minute and google it and see, because I know, I know there, you know, there are, um, and it's just not coming to me right now exactly what we get the crowns for, other than serving him in general. I know keeping his commands, um, but I don't know if it specifies, and I'd like to look that up. Anyway, I'm, yab I'm, I'm yabbling and babbling. Let's read chapter two. 
from death to life, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which previously you lived according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient, which we know is the enemy. We know that is Satan. He is the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient for as long as God allows it. We have to recognize that he does have power. And the, the doors you open, the things you dabble in, um, the, the little dark fun, the Halloween stuff, uh, I'll just say it. It's darkness. There's no light in it. Um, you're opening doors to him. And he has the power to come in when you're playing in his playground. Like something I just shared earlier says that, you know, we were we were called to to shed light, to be salt and light, not uh, to play in the devil's sandbox. And if that's not it, I don't know what it is. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. And that is what that stuff, you can, you have arguments, you have arguments for that kind of stuff, but they are all catering to your flesh, not to the Spirit of God. Not to the Spirit of God. Get with God on that. Seek God on that instead of just arguing with somebody on Facebook. And He will tell you. He will show you. It's the same Spirit that showed me, and He will show you too. I have complete confidence in that and in Him. Praise God. <laughs> but God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love that He had for us, made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. His amazing grace. How sweet, right? He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. It is all about him and his glory. And he made us so he gets to do that. <laughs> he makes the rules. He made all the rules. Oh, thank you, Lord. And they're perfect. If we just follow them, they're always oh, perfect in all his ways. It's all in here. It is all in here. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Like he's paved the way. He's He's given us all the tools. He gave us this whole big handbook here, this manual that has all the answers. <laughs> We're set up for success, and the victory's already won. All we have to do is fight and stand on his word. Come on. Come on. It's hard in the face of your kids that they don't like it, that think you're being unfair, and and even your, your friends oftentimes, uh, so-called friends. Um, the world. That's the world. That's the world where it has crept in. Don't let it creep into your kids. And don't don't subject yourself to it in friends. Find friends that believe the word and stand on it. You've got a friend in Jesus. Come on. Come on. Though none go with me, I still will follow. So then remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At that time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now Christ Je in Christ Jesus, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, that is us, the adopted children, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. Hmm. In his flesh, he made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations, so that he might create in himself one new man from the two, resulting in peace.
Mm. He did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The Greek and the Jew. The Gentile and the Jew. For three, okay. So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. You know, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, we need to think about what we would take to heaven with us and what we wouldn't. Now, I know that we're not taking none of this stuff with us, but imagine your house in heaven. Is it gonna have um is it gonna have a bunch of idolatry in it? Well no. So why should it here? Um, you know that just that just came to me as members of God's household. That starts here. That doesn't just wait and start in heaven. I mean come on. Come on, come on. Mm, help me, Holy Spirit, if there's something else you want to say about that, because that just popped in and Oh, there's so much to that. The words aren't coming. In him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. Consider these things in all, not just on Sunday, not just at church, all the time, in all you do, in all you think. In all you say, um, this is a job. <laughs> this is a job that costs you everything. It is free, and yet it costs you everything that your flesh desires and everything um, that your carnal man would have because he will lead you the wrong way. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. Be a dwelling for the Lord in the Spirit. Let him come in and cleanse you. In him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. Oh, I just love that. I just love that. And that's exactly, I mean, you know, he stalked me there about God's household, and that's what he went on with. It just, mm, I love it, I love it, I love it. It. We shouldn't go anywhere we wouldn't take Jesus with us. I mean, in thought or in action. <sighs> in daytime or nighttime, the list goes on and on, but it all comes back to the same principle, to the same truth and to the same God. He is holy. He is holy. And he'll make us holy too. Bit by bit, little by little, leaps and bounds. I mean, however he wants to do it, but you got to be willing. You got to be open and submitted to him for him to do it because he always gives you a choice as well. Don't let your choice be destruction and darkness. Let it be light and salt and the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. This morning, throughout the day, the night, every day. And his mercies are new every morning. If it didn't go so well yesterday, try again today. Press in and seek the Lord with all your heart. When you seek him first and his kingdom, everything you need is going to be available. It's going to be provided. I mean, it's just who he is and it's what he does. So, praise God this morning. That was good. That kind of went everywhere, but it was great, wasn't it? His word is super. We were still in the uns, and I love that. So, y'all have a wonderful, seems like I'm getting shorter and shorter with these, but, I mean, the Holy Spirit says what he wants to say, and um, I feel like that's a good place to end this morning. It's a good word. Um, so, we will. I'm trying to get ahead of myself and move my stuff. All right, y'all have a great day. Happy Tuesday. Blessed day in the Lord Jesus. Seek and you will find. 
Knock and the door will be open. Ask and he will answer every single time. Have a good one. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Uh oh. Wrong scroll. What is going on? There it is. Hm. Till tomorrow.